Hey there, this is Ian Perry, Solutions Specialist at Candrone. Today we're going to do some data processing. Last time we were out at Fort Langley, British Columbia, and we we're flying our Mavic 3 Enterprise over a field. We collected some photogrammetry data, and we also did a little bit of surveying with our Emla GNSS base and rover setup. Today I'm going to walk you through importing your GCPs, processing data in PIX4D, and rendering a map in QGIS. So to extract our rover data, I go into my phone and the app MLID Flow, that's where the survey was recorded. And I can see all of my surveys. The one I'm interested in is Fort Langley Farm. You can see information pertaining to the coordinate reference system and the date. If I tap on the ellipsis, I can export. In this case, I'll choose CSV. And then I can Bluetooth it to a device such as my work phone or computer this way. And once I have my CSV file from my GNS survey onto my desktop, I'll also bring the Mavic data from the micro SD card to the same place. I'm going to create a new folder here so that I don't get uh, mixed up with existing files. I'm going to call this Fort Langley Farm. That'll be my working folder while we're processing data. You can see in addition to my survey, I also have photos from our flight. Now taking a look at that uh, CSV file that came from our MLID uh, GNSS survey, you can see there's a lot of information here and this is very useful to me. Uh, I can see that each GCP has a uh, number. I can see easting, northing and elevation go all the way to the end, I can even see the coordinate reference system here as WGS 84 UTM zone 10 north. There is something missing, however, that I think is important. As you look here, you see that the elevations are uh, ellipsoid heights. And so we're actually looking at negative numbers because we are quite close to sea level here in Metro Vancouver. Now, I feel like this is going to look funny in the final product when we make our map. So while this is good, accurate data, I think if I went with orthometric heights here, it would be a little easier for the user to understand if they didn't have any survey knowledge. So the first step here is to go into the Natural Resources Canada service to convert ellipsoid heights into orthometric heights. And I'll take you through that now. So in my browser, I will just Google NRCAN GPS-H. It's going to take me to this service. You can do quite a lot here. You could put your survey from uh, WGS84 into NAD83, which is a common practice for surveyors in this area. I'm not going to worry about that this time. I'm simply going to convert the heights. So I choose ITRF 2020 as the reference frame we used. And here I'll import each of my four row points. Now you can do this through a batch process, but I only have four, so I'm just going to enter them in by hand. And then once I have all my orthometric heights, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new column here for orthometric heights, so I have them for later. Go over to the Projection tab. Choose the zone you're working with. We're working with UTM 10. Enter your easting in meters, northing in meters, and your ellipsoid height in meters. There we have our first orthometric height at 5.121, which is what we'll display on our map when we're ready to produce it. All right, now that we've converted all of our ellipsoid heights for our GCPs or ground control points into orthometric heights, I just want to make note of the vertical datum and the geoid model that we've used because those will be needed when we put our map together and, and include some pertinent information for any future survey needs. So I've used uh, CGVD 2013 and this geoid model CGG2013A. All right, in the next video, we're going to take you into PIX4D, import these GCPs along with our photos and create an ortho mosaic and digital surface model. 
to then build a map out of. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to candrone.com. With any questions you have, we're always happy to help.